Hello everyone, and God bless you. This video might not be as relevant to any of my subscribers who live outside of the US, uh, but my hope is that everyone will at least get something of value out of it. Uh, you see, a few hours after I posted my last video, uh, the one that talked about the gospel singer Carmen and how he had passed away the day before, uh, the news broke that radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh passed away from lung cancer. And the news was actually announced via a recorded message from Rush's wife to open his show yesterday. And I thought about it, and originally I had not planned to do a video discussing Rush Limbaugh. And this was for a variety of reasons. First, I had already posted a video about someone who had passed away, Carmen. And uh, I didn't want to do two videos about the same subject uh, in a row. Uh, secondly, there was already going to be more than enough tributes and commentary and opinion and discussion about Russia's passing coming from everywhere and everyone else. And thirdly, I just don't make two videos in a row. I mean, that, that, my laziness just can't handle that. I'm tired now. But later on, I changed my mind for a couple of reasons. First, my video, Remembering Carmen, from yesterday, that was actually one of my most viewed videos on my YouTube channel. Now, I'm sure it's because of the name recognition and Carmen happened to be on a lot of people's minds yesterday because he had passed. And my video turned up in the search results because it had Carmen's name in it. But then I thought that Rush is on people's minds today. And people are sad that he's gone. Now, we, we knew this day was coming. We knew he had terminal lung cancer. So we were able to prepare ourselves somewhat makes it a little bit easier, but it, it doesn't make it easy by any stretch of the imagination. So what does this have to do with Jesus? Well, two things. First, it's good that we are sad at Russia's passing. You know, death has a way of, of cutting through the nonsense and the frivolity of life. And it forces us to focus on what is really important. It says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2, It is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting. For death is the destiny of every man, and the living should take this to heart. In short, it is better for you to go to a funeral than it is to go to a party. You know, nothing is better at getting us to think about our own death, our own mortality, and our own afterlife, than the death of someone close to us, or someone that we felt a connection to, like Rush Limbaugh, like Carmen. There are people thinking about their own death right now. People who are older than Rush was when he died. Remember, Rush was only 70 years old. In the U.S., that, that's not terribly old. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed for men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Death is appointed, and you are no exception. So if you are one of those people that are maybe thinking about your own death right now, because Rush has died, there might be a, a, quite a bit of emotion going through you. You might be feeling concerned, you might be feeling worried, or frightened, or even terrified. Can I suggest that that is a good thing? Can I ask you to please don't ignore that feeling? Don't distract yourself from that feeling with more TV or video games or alcohol or food or pornography or gambling. That feeling may go away for a while. You may be able to drown it out. But before you know it, that feeling will be back. So let's deal with it right here and now. If you are worried that you might not have been a good enough person to get into heaven when you die, 
let me give you some closure. You're not. No one is. Not the president or the pope, Bob Dylan or Bono, or you or me. No one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In short, we are all sinners. And there is nothing any one of us can do to earn our way into heaven. But that is the exact reason why Jesus came to earth. He came to die on that cross. That was his mission, to pay the penalty for our sins. So that whoever accepts that free gift of grace, their sins are forgiven. Psalm 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That means God takes our sins and disposes of them, completely wiped out, obliterated. You want to get into heaven when you die and not be worried about it? Then believe what Jesus said. And believe what he did. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, No one comes to the Father but through me. Have you ever heard the colloquialism, a come-to-Jesus moment? Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a collo colloquialism. This is an actual come-to-Jesus moment for you. So come to Jesus. I am asking you, I'm imploring you, even begging you, Tell Jesus that you admit that you are a sinner. Admit that you don't deserve heaven, because no one does. Tell him that you choose to place your faith in him and what he did. That you believe he died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins. And that you accept his free gift of grace, just like a small child accepting a birthday present. Accept it as your irrevocable ticket into heaven that was paid for by the blood of Jesus. Now, according to John 3.16, that is how you get eternal life in heaven. Now, I know for many of you, if not most of you, that doesn't sit well with you. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the messenger. Now, there, there's more to being a Christian than just salvation, more than just getting saved. Uh, there's also this process called sanctification, but I'll leave that for another video. So that was kind of long-winded, but that was the first thing. Secondly, whether Rush Limbaugh was a Christian or not, we can still learn something from Rush's life and his words. I always like uh, to think about one of Rush's catchphrases. He always said that he had talent on loan from God. And he was correct. He did. But he wasn't the only one. You see, God blessed each and every one of us with some kind of talent, some kind of skill. Now, you may not believe that, but God says it's true. And it's up to us to work with God to find out what that talent is and how to use it best to glorify God. And we do this out of gratitude to God for what he has done for us, namely buying our ticket into heaven with the blood of his Son. And, you know, we can also learn to be generous like Rush Limbaugh. Last night I heard a story from a, uh, a country music singer who was raising money for a charity. I think it was uh, St. Jude's Hospital. And the singer had previously worked with Rush on a, a reality show. Well, Limbaugh donated $100,000 of his own money to that charity. But he did it on one condition that no one would know that it came from him. He didn't want any publicity. He didn't want any accolades or applause. Jesus would approve. As he said in Matthew 6, 3, When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. And as bombastic and even a blowhard as Rush could be on the air sometimes, he was a very humble and a very charitable person in real life. And that is a great way to live. That is a godly way to live. So in retrospect, I guess maybe this video was worth making after all. 
hopefully you got something of value out of it. I want to thank you all for watching, and thank you, Rush. God bless you all, and mega dittos.